The rigid C-Snake standard, mini, and compact camera systems give you three great options for inspecting main and branch sewer laterals. With the stiffest push cable and the highest light output, the standard C-Snake is the ideal choice when you need to inspect long runs in larger lines. It can accommodate lines from 2 to 12 inches and is available with a self-leveling camera head, up to 325 feet of push cable, and includes wheels to make transporting the unit easier. The Mini C-Snake is a good multi-purpose camera. It can inspect main and branch lines from 1 and 1 half to 6 inches and is available with up to 200 feet of push cable. The C-Snake Compact is a lightweight integrated system that includes the reel, 100 feet of push cable, and a docking color monitor. The Compact is a good choice for inspecting small or restricted lines with tight turns. It has the most flexible push cable and can be used in lines from 1 and 1 half to 4 inches. All three systems include a sonde, a remote transmitter. The sonde is located inside the spring just behind the camera head. When activated, it transmits a signal that can be located with the rigid receiver, allowing you to pinpoint the camera's position underground. All three systems can display the distance measurement on screen, and the standard and mini are equipped with the Count Plus, which can also display date, time, and descriptive text. The systems also include pipe centering guides. Pipe guides install over the spring and help raise the camera off the bottom of the pipe for a better image. In this tutorial, we'll follow a user as he gets familiar with his new equipment. He'll be using a mini C-Snake and a basic monitor, but the instructions apply to all three reels. After watching this video, be sure to watch C-Snake Tips and Tricks, which goes far beyond the basics to help you get the most out of your investment. After unpacking your equipment, take a few minutes to read the operator's manuals. The manuals contain additional information that isn't covered in this video. We've read the manuals, so let's take a look at the equipment. We'll start with the monitor. The mini pack can operate on AC power using the included power adapter or on rigid rechargeable batteries. The monitor supports several viewing angles. You can lay it back or you can open the front cover and use the handle as a tilt stand. The unit has a storage area under the LCD screen that can be used to store small items like the AC power adapter. The camera connects to the monitor with the C-Snake system cable, which is stored on the reel. Locate the connector jack on your monitor. If you have the mini pack, you'll find it on the rear of the unit. You'll want to tighten the locking sleeve until it's snug to ensure that you have a good connection and a watertight seal. If you look at the top of the monitor, you'll find a keypad that controls the camera and monitor functions. Press the power key to turn the system on. When the unit is powering up, you'll see the counter's startup screen and the monitor will flicker several times. This is normal. Let's take a look at the rest of the keys. The sonde key turns the camera's sonde on and off. When the sonde is transmitting, you'll see faint wavy lines on the monitor's display. This is normal, and the lines will disappear when you turn the sonde off. The zero key resets the distance reading to zero when you hold the key down for about three seconds. The dimmer key lets you adjust the brightness of the camera's lighting elements. You can use individual presses to adjust the light level, or you can hold the key down. The image flip key rotates the LCD screen image 180 degrees and comes in handy if you don't have a self-leveling camera head. If you have a standard or mini C-Snake reel, the Count Plus has additional features that you can access from its keypad. 
we'll look at the basic features here, and you can watch Sea Snake tips and tricks or refer to the operator's manual if you want to learn more. The text key turns the on-screen text off and on. The Count Plus supports up to 30 pages of text, and we've programmed several to get you started. You can use the left and right arrow keys to display these extra pages. The Distance key turns the distance display off and on. And if you're using an older monitor that doesn't have a zero key, you can use the one on the keypad to zero the counter. The Time Date key toggles the time and date displays off and on. The Menu key opens the Settings menu. Use the up and down arrow keys to navigate, and use the zero key to select items. Refer to the Operator's Manual for a detailed description of the menu options. We've taken a quick look at our system. We've explored the monitor's features and operation, connected the camera, and seen how the Count Plus keypad works. Before taking our unit into the field, we're going to inspect a line we're familiar with to get comfortable with our equipment and learn its controls. There's a 4-inch main line close by, so we'll inspect that one. Our entry point will be through a clean out in the floor. There are several items that will make our inspection easier. Gloves to protect our hands, safety glasses, towels to wipe down the cable, and a soft towel to kneel on. How you position your equipment will vary from job to job, but the general principles never change. You want to be able to work comfortably. You want to be efficient, and you want the push cable in your line of sight when you're looking at the monitor. This will give you better control of the push cable so that you can minimize the possibility of damaging it and incurring an expensive repair. For this job, we're going to place the monitor close to the access point where we'll be able to see both the monitor and the push cable at the same time. We'll position the reel so that the cable has a straight path into the access point. We'll keep it within easy reach so that we can get to its keypad easily if we need to, and so that we can easily manage the push cable when we're retrieving it back into the drum. Our equipment is set up, and we've connected the camera to the monitor, so we'll go ahead and power the system on. The reel has a handbrake that lets us adjust the drag on the drum, and we're going to tighten it up a bit. We want the drum to turn easily, but we also want it to slow down quickly once we've stopped moving the push cable. This will make the push cable easier to control. We want our distance measurements to begin from the access point, so we'll put the camera in the cleanout and zero out the counter. We're ready to go, so we'll drop the camera down into the main line, and then we'll push it down the line a bit to get a feel for the cable. As a general rule, you can use the camera anywhere that you would use a drain cable, but you'll need to handle the sea snake cable properly to avoid premature wear to the outer jacket or kinking the fiberglass core. Keep your lead hand close to the access point, and if you have trouble moving the camera forward, use short strokes to work it past the problem area. When we're finished with our practice inspection, we'll retrieve the cable. To help keep the cable clean, we'll wipe it down as we push it back into the drum. We'll keep our lead hand close to the access point, and we'll pull the cable straight up so that the cable jacket doesn't scrape against the edge of the cleanout. When we're done retrieving the cable, we'll wipe off the camera and lens. In this tutorial, we've taken a quick look at how to connect and operate your CSNAKE camera system, and we've walked you through a sample inspection. Now that you've seen the basics, be sure to watch Sea Snake Tips and Tricks, which is included on the product DVD and is also available on the Rigid Today YouTube channel. Sea Snake Tips and Tricks is packed with helpful tips and advanced techniques that will maximize your investment. On behalf of the entire Rigid team, thank you for purchasing Sea Snake equipment and thank you for watching this video.